Okay, let's say you're a weeb and you want to come to Japan, but you're also a weeb that also wants to catch fish. So you're a weeb angler. Uh, what you can catch in Japan is, well, the main target would be uh, Japanese sea bass. Uh, if you want to know the scientific name, the scientific name is Latio labrex. So that's like the genus, I guess. And there's three different types of sea bass in Japan. There's the spotted variety, which is the rarest. The um, kind of thick, thick ocean going uh, variety. I don't know the exact name of it, but I'll put it up on the screen later. And then the most common one, which is just the regular Japanese sea bass, the, the most common one that everyone catches. And you can find sea bass all over Japan. And you can also find them in Korea and China. And the spotted varieties are more common in China. And in Japan, it's the just a regular, regular gray, dull gray colored one. So where can you catch um, Japanese sea bass? Uh, you can catch them pretty much everywhere. You can catch them in rivers, estuaries, and in the open ocean. But yeah, besides um, streams or super shallow water or really high elevation waterways, like yeah, streams, uh, you can pretty much catch them anywhere. But um, most commonly you catch them in rivers and estuaries and in the, in the ocean. So for size, they can get up to maximum about one meter, or that's 3.3 .3 feet for you American folks in freedom units. And they can get up to about, I would say maybe like 20 pounds, so 10 kilograms, about that size. But fish that size are pretty rare. So probably the common size range that you catch would be probably 30 centimeters to 80. 80 would be pretty damn big. You'd be really lucky to catch um, over 80 in an urban environment. Uh, as for what they eat, they eat small fish primarily. So that includes anchovies, herrings, sardines, mullet, gizzards, shads, and pilchard, and those are like the common forage uh, the sea bass consume in Japan, and they also consume crustaceans, uh, they'll eat prawns, shrimp, and krill, and then for invertebrates, they'll also eat polychaete worms, which are basically ragworms, which are pretty common around Tokyo Bay, and I'll have to explain that uh, I have to explain how they feed on polychaete worms because it depends on the season in which in what kind of bait they eat and they also eat squid so basically anything shiny fast moving uh, they'll eat it so for the seasons to catch sea bass you can pretty much catch them in spring summer autumn and winter but the best times to catch them in Japan would be spring summer and win oh sorry Spring, summer, and autumn. Winter would be a different story. You won't be able to catch them from land. You would have to go out to sea because they go go pretty far out to spawn. So you won't be able to catch sea bass uh, in river systems or estuaries during the winter except for juveniles. So if you want big fish, you have to go out in open water in the ocean. Okay, and as for their behavior, they're mostly nocturnal. So if you want to target sea bass, you would have to go at night. You have to go fishing at night. Um, and also they're a very structure-based fish. So they would hang around underwater structures like uh, rocks or they'll hide under bridges. They'll hide under boats. So... Uh, boat yards and docks are really good because they'll hug the sea wall and basically they need structure for for them to ambush prey and it's not it's not impossible for you to catch sea bass during the day but it'll be much better to go fishing at night because they're more active at night and during the day they're mostly hiding in structure and they're not they're not in a 
mood to feed. And as for the conditions to feed, like the tides, the best timing to catch sea bass would be uh, rising or falling tide. So when the water is moving and when the water is still like in low tide and uh, peak tide, they would kind of switch off and they won't eat as, they won't be as active. And also sea bass, they're kind of weird. They would, they prefer really shitty weather. Like normally you would think like a, a sunny day with clear water would be really good for fishing, but for sea bass it's actually the opposite. They prefer rainy, rainy weather, and they also prefer water when it's kind of cloudy, so not super clear. And yeah, and they're also mostly active at night, which is also quite different from how you normally fish. So... The best way to categorize this would be, I'll give you a best scenario, a best case scenario for fishing for sea bass in terms of conditions and the worst case scenario for fishing, when fishing for sea bass. So the best would be when it's drizzling at night with, and you're fishing at a timing where the tide is either dropping or rising and the water is semi cloudy and you have some sort of structure. And you're fishing in some sort of structure. And the worst case scenario would be fishing in the day when it's super sunny, super hot, and when the water is just crystal clear and there's no structure. That would be like the worst, worst time to fish for sea bass. Because they're nocturnal and they really like structure and with the super clear water, they can just see any everything. And when they see your lure, they'd be like, Nah, I ain't eating that. <laughs> That's just fake. So yeah, they're pretty. They're quite an intelligent fish. So the best time would be f to fish at night, and when the weather condition isn't really the best for people, at least. So drizzling, raining would be a would be good conditions to catch sea bass. So I'm gonna go through the terminal tackle that you need to catch sea bass with. So for your rod, you can use a rod. You should be using a rod that is up from six to nine feet, I would say. Six feet being like the shortest that you should go. And nine feet should be, well, you can go up to 10 feet if you're fishing at beaches. But besides that, when you're fishing in urban canals and stuff, maybe six to nine feet should be enough for casting distance. I would recommend seven to eight would be a good range to have a rod for sea bass fishing. As for your, wait, okay. So I also, the rod that I'm using right now is the, is a Shimano Zodius and it's a seven feet rod. So the poundage is about eight to 15, if I'm correct. It's about eight to 15 pounds. So, yeah, I think it's a it's a good mid range rod. You can go heavier than that and go up to maybe thirty pound, thirty pound test rods. But that's when that's for casting heavier lures, or casting swim baits that are super big and heavy that can break uh, small to mid range rods. So I would say eight to fifteen pound should be a mid range, and you can go up to thirty. But over thirty, I would say it's pretty overkill. And yeah, uh, seven to eight feet, nine feet if you want. Six should be your bare minimum shortest rod. And your reel would be, uh, I'd say the smallest reel you should use is 2,500. And you can use it all the way up to 4,000. 5,000 I would say is too big, but 2,500 should be the smallest. Because if you hook up to something really big, and you don't have the line capacity, you'd be pretty screwed. 3,000, I'd say, is the perfect size for, for fishing with sea bass. 4,000 is when you're fishing in the open ocean, when you need, you need more line capacity for casting. But personally, I use 2,500, the size 2,500, because uh, I don't like casting really. I don't like carrying heavy reels and rods all the time so I like to keep my equipment light so I can just keep casting over and over 
So yeah, again, 3,000 is the best size, but you can use 2,500 to 4,000, whatever you like. And as for line, I'd say for your main line, your braid should be about, I'd say the lowest would be 15 pound test. So yeah, 15 pound test and you can go all the way up to um, 30 pounds. You don't have to go anywhere above 30 pounds because that would start to affect your casting distance. So 15 to 30 pound braid for your main line. And for a leader, you can, I'd say, 15 to 40, depending on what, what area you're fishing. So if you're fishing somewhere with lots of snags, lots of oyster shells or rocks, sharp rocks that can cut up your your leader, I'd say maybe fish uh, 25 pounds or 30 pounds just to be safe. Mono or fluoro doesn't really matter. That's up to your preference. I personally use fluoro, but mono should be is also fine. And you should also have like a you should also have a selection of snaps so you can interchange your lure really fast when when you see fish feeding. So you don't have to just cut your line and retie it all the time. So yeah, a selection of strong snaps up to maybe 30 pounds, 30 pound test, 30 pound test snaps, your line, 15 to 30 pound braid, your leader, 15 to 40, reel, 2,500 to 4,000, and 3,000 being the mid-range, and your rod should be 6 to 9 feet long. Ideally, 7 would be, 7 or 8 would be perfect. So yeah, that's for the terminal tackle and the introduction. I'll go further in detail and like how to approach different seasons and what kind of lures you should use in different kind of conditions.